Imagine a world of internet connection at a speed faster than that of lightning. Speed 10 times faster than what is obtained in the fourth generation that is 4G network. A world of interconnectedness where the TV set, door, refrigerator, cars and other home appliances are being controlled remotely from the mobile phone. Virtual surgical operation and telemedicine being executed with clinical precision. But these and many more are the endless promises of the world of 5G network, which is an advancement on the current 4G network being used largely in major cities of Nigeria. On the show today, we will review the policies and implementation of the federal government 5G plan. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. All right, Nipos launches e-debit card. CPN's monetary policy rate, among others, rounded up the business week in Nigeria. Take a look. The Nigerian Postal Services, Nipos, has launched its e-debit card agency banking platform and 27 cargo delivery vehicles to help improve service delivery across the country. While performing the launching on Thursday in Abuja, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Pantami, said no economy could be transformed without digitization, noting that this is in line with the current administration's target to achieve a digitized economy. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Songwolu has flagged off the construction of a Jota Okwebi link bridge and approach roads to ease traffic in the Kedja and Ojota areas of the state. The legacy project, whose construction is taking off 20 years after conception, is expected to link Okwebi in Allen Avenue area with Ojota and Maryland through Odoya Alaro underpass. Songwolu, at the flag of ceremony, said that the the project is strategic because of the huge traffic bearing capacity of the area as it will help reduce the perennial gridlock along the Mobolaji Bank Anthony Road that leads to the Marutala Mohammed International Airport. On Wednesday, the House of Representatives resolved to set up an ad hoc committee to investigate the suspicious and unclaimed funds in various accounts in commercial banks in Nigeria. The House mandated the committee to also investigate the unremitted funds collected on behalf of ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government by the banks. On Tuesday, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria has voted unanimously to retain the benchmark interest rate at 11.5% whilst keeping all other monetary parameters constant. This was announced by the Governor of the CBN, Godwin Emefele, while reading the communique of the first Monetary Policy Committee meeting of the year on Tuesday, 25th January 2022. Also on Tuesday, President Mamadou Buhari directed all security institutions to immediately leverage 5G technology to enhance national security when deployed. Buhari spoke at the launch of the National Policy on 5G for Nigeria's digital economy, saying the federal government will take full advantage of the opportunities provided by 5G for the nation's economy, security and well-being. Well, those were the stories that rounded up Business Nigeria for this week. Recently, at the National Policy on FG uh, for Nigeria's digital, e or 5G rather, for Nigeria's uh, digital economy, President Mohamed Buhari directed all the security institutions to immediately leverage the fifth generation, that is the 5G technology, when deployed to enhance security in the country. 
Well, joining us on the show this time around to look at the policy and implementation is the president of the Private Telecommunications and Communications Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Texan, Okbeemi uh, Tomori. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Thank you. Good evening. All right. Uh, there have been uh, several wonderful things that have been said about um, the 5G technology, how it can enhance the way we go about doing things, uh, the speed, the interconnectivity, and of course, um, how it can actually impact on business, agriculture, telemedicine. Can you tell us more about the practicality here in Nigeria? Uh, thank you so much, um, and uh, it's a good thing. Thanks so much for having me here, and uh, I see also in the short documentary you just presented, uh, there are a lot of uh, opportunities in the 5G technology which is coming, and uh, particularly as we look at what the telecom industry has been contributing to the growth of the nation, particularly the GDP, which is, was about 13% uh, last year. Uh, it shows uh, perfectly that uh, if we could uh, make sure that uh, we we do better on this uh, front, that is the front of uh, uh, telecommunication in Nigeria, then the country will actually great. I mean, gain a lot and the benefit seriously from uh, focusing on these benefits. As the president rightly said, it. Uh, as uh, multiple funds, like uh, for the economy, generally it's going to benefit from that, and uh, security, health, education, and so on. So for us in Nigeria, we do a lot in uh, making sure that these technologies pay us a lot. Uh, we, we have had uh, the other um, generations of uh, telecommunication, which was, the last one was 4G. And uh, you could see that uh, it gave Nigeria a very great leap in the field of uh, having uh, connectivity. And uh, the way we do business, transaction in Nigeria has gotten better for that. All right, I really need to understand why it is important uh, to Nigeria, specifically knowing that uh, uh, we, uh, you know, took a while before we get into the 4G, uh, you know, technology platform, you know, but right now, would you really say that as a country, we are indeed ready for this particular technology? Yes, um, that is because uh, 5G addresses limitations which we will find in uh, the other technologies, including 4G itself. That is, uh, we have a greater capacity in the fact that uh, there are other frequencies which previously we've not been able to harness like uh, the millimeter wave, which uh, has not been harnessed previously. Uh, for the 5G, we will be able to use that for this technology. So in these uh, particular frequencies which we mentioned, uh, we have from about uh, 30 gigahertz to about 300 gigahertz of the frequency. Uh, we, we will be able to have more capacity. And when you have more capacity, then you can actually handle the number of people that will be connecting on the network. Uh, everyone will have much more and uh, better quality of uh, connection. Uh, it will also uh, flow and follow the part of the national broadband uh, uh, plan of uh, Nigeria in the sense that uh, we, we would be moving towards having cheaper data. Data is going to get cheaper and uh, according to the plan, we are expecting that uh, we should fall below 400 naira per every gigabit of uh, data, which people will be getting. So, with well, that's IG, very interesting. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh. So, we will be moving towards that very fast. All right, fine. It sounds all wonderful, you know, very, very wonderful to the country. Now, but then, are there any immediate challenges, you know, that we need to overcome, you know, to get into this uh, wonderful world of um, technology? Uh, a lot of people over time will complain about the issues of um, erratic and power supply, forex, um, right of way. You know, are these issues that we really need to, you know, combat? Definitely, the challenges will always be there, and. Uh you know, the benefits will definitely push us all, including the government, to, to make sure that uh, we get all those challenges out of the way, to make sure this happens. For 5G, uh, as you rightly said, it writes better on the fiber connectivity, 
which uh, for Nigeria we still a little bit backward, but it doesn't matter. The only thing is that uh, we would be able to do this gradually and uh, make sure that it grows. For us as a, a union, uh, our immediate concern in this aspect is to make sure that uh, Nigeria truly localizes 5G. That is, the local competence is a very great area which we should look at. We shouldn't make 5G a kind of uh, imported technology. That is, we should try to own it in Nigeria, try to train and make sure that uh, the resources we have already on the uh, telecoms front in Nigeria uh, are well and adequately trained to be able to, to run this for us because uh, there are a lot of things that needs to be considered on the uh, 5G technology because of the opportunities that opens up and the rate at which uh, we will go uh, the line of data. Communications will focus more and they will, most people will go more on the data line and uh, businesses will transform All right. a lot to remote. So it means that uh, we need to gain competence and make sure that we really own it. And uh, no one does it better than the people in the country. So for us as a union, we'll be focusing on that aspect to, to make sure that this is well incorporated in the government policy. All right. All right, okay, let me just um, hold that thought. We'll come and discuss more after this quick break. It is still um, business insight on Plus TV Africa. And indeed, we're still looking at 5G technology in Nigeria, the policies and, of course, the implementation. In a moment, for more, don't go away. All right, welcome back. It is still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, and we're looking at the wonderful world of the 5G technology in Nigeria, how far uh, we need to go and what we need to put in place so that uh, we can have a uh, seamless you know, connectivity and all of that. Uh, we still have um, the president of um, Tech, uh, Texan, that is Okbebi uh, Tomori. Thanks for staying with us, um, Okbebi. Uh, thank you. All right, fine. Let us talk about uh, you know, the... the the process involved uh, during the spectrum um, auction and everything, and uh, two winners emerged. That's MTN and Mafab. You know, you know. But right now, do you really think that uh, for just those two players, uh, we can actually get um, the technology that we actually deserve here in Nigeria? Uh, yes, I believe uh, so, and uh, definitely it is a gradual process. And uh, right now, I think. I think it is uh, the 3.5 gigahertz uh, yes. band that have just been auctioned. So there are still other bands which will be available for other players to, uh, to come in. And I believe uh, CC will gradually move, uh, move towards those songs as well. Uh, as I said, there is still the opportunity to use the existing uh, bands which have been licensed for the other technologies, the 4G, the 3G previously. This also could be honest and used on 5G. Uh, for for Ross right now, I believe it's a good thing that uh, the giant uh, telecommunications company, MTN, uh, has won this license and uh, we believe that uh, they have more than uh, what it takes to, to, to deliver this. And uh, for us, we, we, we will try to make sure that uh, uh, for our people, so we'll be supporting this as much as we can and uh, focus also on the uh, resource development, the, the, the level of competence of uh, the, the people working on this will definitely have to increase. So yes, I believe, believe so much that uh, these two will be able to at least kick it off in the nation. All right, fine. Uh, there are expectations, uh, you know, of um, this uh, two licensees, um, as it were. You know, from all we hear, between the first and the second year of the license, um, the operators are expected to roll out a service in at least one state in each uh, geopolitical zone. You know, how feasible do you see that? Uh, absolutely doable. Uh, because uh, right now, uh, as you know, 5G technology uh, came in uh, over the last three years. So it has been developing gradually, and uh, there are opportunities which uh, could be honest. Uh, that is, 5G could be made to ride on the existing 4G. That is, if even if there are challenges for 5G to stand alone on its own, there are opportunities with which you can put it on the existing 4G. So this will leveraging on that, it will make the, the, the deployment of 5G 
something a little bit easier for for them to do. So within that space, space, space of that uh, period given, yes, it is uh, doable. Well, oh. doable. All right, now, so let's talk about um, you know, entrepreneurs. How can they really key into the, um, the huge potentials of 5G? That's on the one hand. And secondly, for the average consumer, you know, would they really need to you know, change their, their seams, like what happened with the 4Gs? Um, okay, yes, on that one, even including the mobile handsets. Uh, most of them right now do not have the 5G capability. So definitely when 5G comes, yes, we will need to do that. But we need to understand what 5G covers really. Uh, that is one of the use cases of uh, 5G technology. That is the mobile communication, which mm -hmm. uh, we do, you and I do with our handset and so on. So, But there are others and uh, many other uh, aspects of it where uh, devices will definitely have to come in together with this uh, uh, deployment. And uh, when those devices come, you come to talk about uh, sensors, which will aid the IoT, the Internet of Things. A lot of things will need to be connected. And uh, as such, we we'll expect to see a lot of uh, other devices coming in with that technology. All right, let's move away from mobile technology specifically now and talk about other ways that it can impact on business. For instance, uh, if I were into um, agriculture or maybe um, involved in other business, how can I bring uh, to bear you know, the operations of um, you know, 5G to see if I'm not having to just uh, connect from my phone, really? Uh, yes, okay. Um... It starts from, uh, as I said, there will be uh, connectivity for so many things. And then uh, including, uh, for example, uh, someone in the, uh, in the agriculture sector and uh, who has a lot of animals on his farm and uh, would like to monitor, for example, where you put top of uh, uh, a lot, maybe about 500 heads of cattle. Uh, in order to be able to manage them, each one of them could actually be attached with a particular uh, device. And uh, you will be, be able to monitor location, the health status of those animals, and depending on the kind of data you would like to collect, then easily uh, it will be, uh, I mean, it will get easier to be able to manage a very big flock of, uh, uh, I mean, animals on, on farms. That is one of the uses. And uh, when it also connects to security, even if those animals get missing, someone uh, rob them and so on, it will be easy to track locations. So it helps also uh, in uh, collecting the enough data from uh, plants and uh, sending to a, part a central location where those data could actually be analyzed right. and then get a better condition and uh, development for, for plants. Okay. On the field. Okay. Finally, okay, me. Let's talk about um, text and now. You know, you know. In all of this, now, what's your involvement and um, how exactly? Or what exactly are you going to do to ensure that uh, you know your members and, of course, um, Nigerians generally, you know, get to understand all of the benefits and uh, you know, Nigerians are better off for it. Uh, okay. Yes, as I said earlier, for for our members uh, who are working in many of these companies uh, right now in Nigeria. Uh, particularly in MTN, where we have our members also. MTN happened to be the ones to kick off, uh, one of the companies to kick off this in Nigeria. Uh, as I said, we will need to focus on the inclusive, I mean, to make sure that we include our members in this delivery. A lot of times you find that uh, uh, in the beginning, we don't have the competence. We, we may not have those, those competence available in the number which is required. So we would like to a situation to see a situation where even when you import, when you bring in uh, an expert, then we would have Nigerians attached to, to, to such experts to make sure that uh, within a very short time, the experts will be able to go back and Nigerians will continue doing such. All right. job. But uh, uh, if we are not very careful, we don't play this very well. Uh, sometimes we could see this leading into uh making a lot of uh, uh people obsolete in the kind of way or or redundant 
So this is what we are watching. Uh, we are watching out for right. very well to be at the level of competence is increased. Well, thank you, Okpemi. Indeed, uh, Nigerians are, are going to benefit. And of course, uh, Nigerians are not just expatriates will actually be brought to bear. And uh, the inclusiveness that you talked about uh, will be seen you know, to a large extent. We have been speaking with um, Okpemi Tomori, the president of Texan. And uh, we uh, just explored uh, the 5G technology, you know, the implications, and of course, all of the benefits. Many thanks once again, Okpemi. Sure. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right, I will leave you with a report on the Red Line Rail project acquired by the Lagos State Government. You know, that's the size of the show. I am Justin. I'll continue to return again next time. Bye for now. The acting Milwaukee mayor, Kavila Johnson, receives Governor Sawunlu and his team to the city. The governor and his delegation inspect the interior design of the newly acquired Talgo trains with a speed limit of 330 km per hour. The intracity metropolitan trains are a boost for the Red Line project to kick off. A train is not something you just, just you know, go on the shelf and pick up, right? And so we were very, we were pretty challenged knowing where we can get, you know, brand new trains like this. And so we're very, very lucky that our partnership and our conversations with some of our partners here started with, uh, with Talgo about a month, a month and a half ago. And because of Christmas and New Year, we couldn't, you know, close it up. But I'm so, so excited that um, within the, you know, the first month of the year, we've been able to take a trip, a very deserving one for that matter. And we've seen a beautiful white and red tree. You know, coincidentally, the real line is called a red line. It's called a red line. And so you can see they've given us the color as well. So we're just going to brand in and put up our, our seal there. Chief Executive Officer and President Targo USA, Antonio Perez, warns against not putting the trains to use. He shows gratitude for the purchase. With a capacity of 500,000 passengers daily, the red line will have 11 stations and when completed, will be the first operational metro systems in West Africa. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Uyidoku, reporting for Plus TV, Africa.